Welcome back. Today we're going to study linear inequalities in two variables, meaning we're going to graph these. Um, as you can see here, linear inequalities in two variables, these are the graphs where we do the shading of the coordinate plane. So, if you can graph an equation, ax plus by equals c, or y equals mx plus b. So if you can graph an equation in standard form or one in slope-intercept form, you can graph a linear inequality in two variables. As you recall, in standard form, we would calculate the x and the y-intercept, and we would plot those two points, and the solution to that equation would be any point on the line. Any point on the line will satisfy that equation. Uh, same with y equals mx plus b. If it's equals, any point on the line will satisfy the equation. And of course, if you want to graph something in slope-intercept form, we would plot the y-intercept and we would use the slope. Well, I'm going to show you in a minute that graphing linear inequalities, we're going to use these exact same skills. So, you can graph something that's in standard form, and this could be greater than, greater than, or equal to, and you can graph something that's in slope-intercept form. So just for context, uh, if your expression is less than or greater than, okay, then we will use the dashed line because points on that line will not be included in the solution. So a dashed line is similar to our parentheses in our interval notation, or it is similar to what we would call as the open dot. Whereas if we have less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, then we will use a solid line, okay, because points on the line, points on the line will be a solution. points on the line are a solution, versus the dashed line, points on the line are not a solution to the inequality. So, how do I know to shade above or below the line? Well, if we're in slope-intercept form, y is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to mx plus b, we would go to the y-intercept and we'd either shade above or below the line. Okay. Well, here we want y to be greater than our expression. So if we happen to have a line, you know, a solid line like this, and you know, this is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis. Okay, so there's y, and there's x. If we want y's to be greater than or equal to, I go to the y-intercept, and I say, oh, I want the y's that are greater than this line, so all the y's that are above the line. Okay, so that's the advantage of having it in slope-intercept form. Go right to the y-intercept and say, okay, is y are y's greater than the line, or are they less than the line? And so, if they're less than the line, we would shade at the y-intercept and shade everything below the line. Standard form, that's a little bit tougher. Okay, a little more challenging in standard form. Just because it's greater than or less than doesn't necessarily mean we automatically shade above or below. It's much safer to test an ordered pair. And then you check that ordered pair, see if it satisfies. If it works in our inequality, then we know that every ordered pair in that region will work. And the most common ordered pair to check is the origin, 0, 0. So we'll do a couple samples like this, and you'll see how that works. So our first sample problem, y is greater than 1 third x minus 4. So we've got an inequality in slope-intercept form, and greater than, hopefully you look at this already and go, oh, this is going to be a dashed line. So you already know your line is going to be a dashed line. I've got my slope, one-third, and my y-intercept of negative four. So 
we'll make our coordinate plane here, our x and y axis. And then we'll go ahead and graph our line. So our y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, negative 4. So I will go ahead and plot that point. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I didn't quite leave myself enough room here. But. And then my slope, my rise is 1 and my run is 3. Rise 1, run 3. Rise 1, run 3. So there's the slope of my line. Connect those two lines. Oh, that's not a very good line. We connect those two. Okay, so I did my rise over my run. My other point should have been right there. And now we want to shade. So we want all the y's that are greater than 1 third x minus 4. So we want to go ahead and shade. Above the y intercept. So, all that stuff. So, that means any ordered pair, any ordered pair that's in the shaded region will satisfy that inequality. Now, I did make one mistake. I see it here already. I made a mistake. My line needs to be dashed. So, we'll go back and make that correction. Now I have the correct solution set. So any ordered pair that's on that line, that will not work. But anything that's in the shaded region will. So sometimes I make the same mistakes you guys make. Now we have an inequality in standard form. 3x plus 4y equals 12. So we want to solve. We can graph this with two points, finding the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So real quickly, I can find the y-intercept, put 0 in for x, so we get 0 plus 4y is less than or equal to 12, divide by 4, and we get y is less than or equal to 3. So I can plot that on the coordinate, can plot that on the coordinate plane. Draw a good line. You can do this in your notes as well. It's taking all this time. So, y is less than or equal to 3, but we have the ordered pair 0 on the x, 3 on the y. So that's going to be that point right there. And then Finding the x-intercept, that's going to be 3x plus 0, because 4 times y, I'll put 0 in for y, is less than or equal to 12. 3x is less than or equal to 12, and I get x is less than or equal to 4. So the point, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'll go ahead and graph that particular point. And now, I know that this inequality is going to have a solid line. So, I will connect my x and y intercepts with a solid line. Now, the question is, do I graph below the line or do I shade above the line? Where are my solutions? Well, if I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, let's go ahead and test an ordered pair. Uh, we'll test 0, 0. And you can probably eyeball this. That's the beauty of testing 0, 0. That makes the first term 0. The second term 0 less than or equal to 12. Is 0 less than or equal to 12? It is. That's a true statement, which means that every single ordered pair in the side of the line that shares the origin, so we shade the origin side. So 
to any single ordered pair. So there's an infinite number of ordered pairs that are solutions to our inequality, anything that's in the shaded region. Okay? So, and also anything on the line will work as well. Now, we can also do combined inequalities in which we have two graphs on the same coordinate plane. And so we'll graph x minus y is greater than or equal to 4, and y is less than negative 2. So I will go ahead and fill in my x and y axis here. And we want y's that are, did I say less than? Y's that are greater than negative 2. Well, this is going to be a dashed line. And this would be just like graphing y equals negative 2. But we want all the points that are greater than negative 2. Okay? So y's that are greater than negative 2, I'm going to do a dashed line at y is equal to negative 2. And I want to shade everything above this line because I want the y's that are greater than negative 2. In x minus y is greater than or equal to 4, I'm going to use the x and y intercepts here. So 0 minus y is greater than or equal to 4. We divide by negative 1. Now it's an inequality, so if we divide by negative 1, we get y is less than or equal to negative 4. So we have a y-intercept at negative 4. So that's down here. We'll go ahead and plot that. We've got the ordered pair 0, negative 4. And then let's go ahead and find the x-intercept. The x-intercept, well, we do the same thing. Now we have x minus 0 is greater than or equal to 4. So, x is greater than or equal to 4. So, we go out to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have this particular point here. Now, it's greater than or equal to, so it's going to be a solid line. So, I will go ahead and connect my x and y intercepts with my solid line. Now, we already know that we're going to shade above the blue dash line. But let's see where we're going to shade for our x minus y is greater than or equal to 4. Let's see, do we shade in this region where the origin is, or do we shade below the line? So let's do our test point. So I'm going to test the origin, 0, 0. And I get 0 is greater than or equal to 4. That's false. Zero is not greater than or equal to four. So that means my test point is not a valid solution. So I am going to shade everything below this particular line. So I shade in this region here. Okay, and I'm gonna stop shading here because don't I know that I need everything above y equals negative 2? So yellow and blue apparently make green, and so our valid solutions are in this shaded region. So two homework problems essentially in those combined inequalities, and just watch where you're graphing. Be careful, and you can see a test point. Um, is also very helpful. Um, just because it's greater than doesn't mean we necessarily shade above the line uh, if we're in standard form. In the next video, I will show you how to graph these using your graphing calculator. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in class.